Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is about the INFJ and the ENFP relationship. And today's video is brought on by Becky, who requested this video. She sent in her video of her own, and she asked some great questions about the INFJ and the ENFP relationship. Her first question was what I thought about socionics intertype relations and the INFJ and the ENFP. And I will say the INFJ and the ENFP relationship in socionics is described as a mirror relationship. And I agree with this description and I use the same term to describe it. I see the INFJ and the ENFP as mirrors. So what I tend to emphasize is that uh, we have the same values and the same interests. So there is a mutual interest and a mutual fascination and a mutual passion for similar things. But the INFJ and the ENFP share a completely different approach to life and to actions and decision making. So what I found is that uh, our perspective on these values and our approach to these interests are completely different. This is also why the mirror relationship is slated by misunderstandings. Often the relationship between an INFJ and an ENFP, ENFP can only start in one of two ways. Either it is that, wow, that person sees the way, world the exact same way I do. Or it is that misunderstanding. He's so quiet, he must hate me. She's so talkative and chatty. Oh, she must be really annoying and shallow and superficial. So the INFJ and the ENFP relationship either starts in a misunderstanding or misconception of the other or in a sense of mutual admiration and fascination. And this completely depends on your health and your experiences and your level of development. So what I've found is we attract mirrors when we are able to step out of ourselves when we are able to be less sure of ourselves, when we are able to be more open to unconscious influence from others, when we are more open to listen to and adjust to and take in others' perspectives. The INFJ and the ENFP relationship can be extremely difficult if one or both parties are extremely strong-minded, stubborn and stuck to their own ways. An INFJ that refuses to go along with the new opportunities or to see the possibilities brought on by the ENFP. An ENFP unable to entertain the sometimes crazy or strange ideas shared by the INFJ. An ENFP that is um, unable to give of themselves and share of themselves due to fear of being hurt. Or an INFJ that is unable to be really honest with the ENFP and share his truer feelings or emotions or experiences. So in these situations, when you come from this perspective, the INFJ and the ENFP relationship is almost impossible. But when you come from the perspective of vulnerability, it is one of the best choices you can make when in terms of dating. An INFJ that is ready to say, I don't know everything and it I need to keep an open eye and I need to be honest and I need to consider other options, not just my way. That is an INFJ that is ready to meet an ENFP. And often what you'll find is when you meet an ENFP, a lot of things tend to happen in your life. You suddenly your life is filled up with new opportunities. Suddenly you have options, not just the way you have thought out in your head for tens and thousands of years. Okay, we haven't lived that long. But new options, new possibilities beyond what you had thought about previously. When you meet an ENFP, suddenly you're encountered with uh, a level of honesty and authenticity and the sense of wildness that you didn't know you had inside of yourself. So the INFJ is reminded of their natural self or their natural motivation and who they are deep down, not just who they have decided to be out of convenience or for the sake of others, but who they want to be and what they are really feeling besides it all. So often what I find is I argue and I get into conflicts with ENFPs when I'm unable to be honest or when I get too stuck in a role or a persona or too obsessive about one of my visions, but I connect deeply with an ENFP when I'm able to just fall into pure intuition and feeling to set aside my vision for a second, to set aside my social and emotional goals long term for a situation 
and to think about how I'm feeling in the moment as well as what I want long term and to think about what is possible today just as well as what I want 10 years from now. So what can make an INFJ and the ENFP relationship stick? Honestly, I believe you need more than shared values. You need more than just another person of the same type. What makes a relationship last long term, I believe, is shared needs. So what I mean with this is we need to date somebody that wants and needs something that is very similar to us. Often, I believe, a relationship won't work long term if one partner systematically prioritizes success over happiness and if the other person systematically values and prefers happiness over success. What I believe is over time this leads to a frustration where the success oriented type starts feeling that the other person is lazy and sloppy and slow and doesn't do anything where the happiness oriented type believes the other person doesn't care, doesn't want to, to have fun together, doesn't want to just enjoy life or live in the moment. So the divide between happiness and the divide between success, those are two very important things that have nothing to do with MBTI. Another important thing is that of change versus tradition. And if you are an INFJ that's more interested in change, you are going to need a partner that is also open to change. If you are an INFJ that is more traditional, you're going to need a partner that can also be more traditional. So what that means is uh, a partner that will systematically seek to maintain status quo or to maintain things the way they are is going to collide at some point with an INFJ or an ENFP that constantly thinks about what's next, what's new, what could happen, what could be different. So you need to look at your needs. And this also relates to whether you are, for example, more cautious or whether you're more outgoing. It has to do with basically that feeling of uh, do I need the other person to make the first move or do I want to be the person that makes the first move? INFJs can be very outgoing and ENFPs can be very shy and uh, I believe two shy people, an INFJ that is shy and an ENFP that is shy are gonna struggle to really get each other's going and to really push the other person when necessary. The relationship risks stagnation or it risks that it doesn't happen at all. Two outgoing partners might easily collide because they are so focused on each other's and uh, because they are always trying to push each other's. But an outgoing and a, sh a more cautious partner might balance each other's out. The cautious partner giving stability, thought and reasoning. The outgoing partner bringing activity, change and life to the world and to both people. So you need to look at the shared needs and you need to consider not just if your partner is an ENFP or an INFJ but also what they need and what is most important to them. I believe this is the deciding factor, fact, <laughs> deciding factor in whether a relationship can last long term or not. Now I've mentioned it before but the one most important thing that can keep an INFJ and an ENFP together is just vulnerability. When you're starting to get stuck in yourself and your own position and your own feelings and your own thoughts, it can be very difficult to connect. But when you are ready to step out and to share and to go and say things and to express yourself, even when it's difficult, even when it's diff hard, even when there's a chance you'll get hurt, that is what's going to make the relationship blossom, that ability to stick, step out of yourself. I think I think vulnerability is the key factor to solving the misunderstandings that are so common between INFJ and ENFPs. Vulnerability is like the dispel of illusions. It is when you start, stop the show and start being real. It is also when uh, you look in the mirror <laughs> of this mirror relationship and when you truly see the other person. So vulnerability might also be, in part, what you do 
and your ability to step out of yourself, but also your ability to look in the mirror and to see it from the other perspective, to see the value to the INFJ's processing nature and introspective nature, to see the value in their focus on emotional goals and long-term goals. Just as the INFJ's ability to look at the ENFP and see the value of change and variation and to see the value of new opportunities and to see the value of uh, moral standards and uh, of passion as well as honesty and integrity and authenticity. What I believe is these are two types with the same values on different paths but that doesn't mean there's no chance that these paths might connect. Actually, I believe it's one of the most common relationship pairings of all 16 possible combinations. The INFJ and the ENFP relationship is one of the three most common choices that I've seen in terms of dating, alongside dating a person that is identical to you or dating a person that is the opposite of you. So thanks for your question. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next video. If you have any questions or if you have any requests for videos, do visit my patreon.com website, patreon.com slash Eric Thor. Leave a donation and send in your video or send in your question. Thanks for watching and see you guys later.